Hey, Catalina Foothills Church. This is Rob Penley. Good Tuesday morning to you. And uh, it's our plan to be in Colossians chapter 1 this coming Lord's Day. And I want to read to you from the first chapter beginning at the third verse. And this is a prayer that the Apostle Paul, one of the early followers of Jesus, that he is offering to God on behalf of the Christians in Colossae. And so this is what he prays that they would experience, and this is how he prays to God for them. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it's bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, the gospel bearing fruit among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He's a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he's made known to us about your love in the Holy Spirit. Wow, that Epaphras had passed on, man, in the Holy Spirit they love. And so from the day we heard, verse 9, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking, interesting what he asks, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Wow. So notice what Paul prays for. He's not praying that their circumstances would change. He's not praying about their surrounding culture. What's he praying about? Their experience of God, their growth in their awareness of and application of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where he prays for power, he prays for endurance, he prays for patience, he prays for joy. So I know Tuesday morning, I'm gonna wake up and there's things that I wish were different about my circumstances or about all manner of things. And I hear the Apostle Paul saying, pray about your own growth. Pray that you would experience God in such a way that it would make a difference, giving you endurance and patience and joy. So would you join me in praying this way? And let's look forward to looking together more deeply at this prayer of Paul and seeing what it would look like for this kind of attitude and vision to be unleashed in us individually and corporately for the glory of God. And maybe somebody needs to be reminded of this that in the beloved son, Jesus, friend, you have redemption. You have the forgiveness of sins. He's paid for you. Have a great day.